Hello again. This is Dini Pellegrinen with the um, uh, help of the uh, the Tryon Daily Bulletin. I have a hard time with that name because I come from a town where they had the Daily Tribune. This is the Tryon Daily Bulletin and Betty Ramsey, and we've come up with an idea to let all the world know about the interesting people we have here in Tryon, North Carolina. And I have... Uh, a gentleman today, it may take me the whole, uh, the whole program time to introduce him because he has such a background. Mark Schweitzer. Is there a doctor that goes before your name, or have you dropped that? Or No, there is. I, I just, uh, we tend to ignore it. <laughs> Just, well, we, we will not use your doctorate right here today, right? We'll just be Mark and Deanie. That would be great. That Thank you. Good. Okay. Good deal. But anyway, uh, he is um, a professor, a performer, a composer, an arranger, an editor, and a librettist. Is that correct? Librettist? That is correct. And I, something else is on down below here that I missed out on, an author. An author as well, yep. Okay. That's the program in itself. Uh, Mark Schweitzer, you have quite a background, and um, uh, you've taught at uh, universities at Stetson, uh, Louisiana College, Austin Pay. Murray State, isn't that in Ohio? No, that's in Murray, Kentucky. Oh, okay. Well, that's it's close the by. the Ohio Valley Conference. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a Buckeye, so you're my neighbor at one time. Anyway, uh, a, a number of places you have been a teacher and uh, you found time to do many other things, but I want to know, my first question is, how did you end up in Tryon? Well, we, we had, um, our, our children had grown and moved away, and it was clear they weren't coming back. So we decided it's time to move over to North Carolina, which is where my wife and I met. And so we'd been sort of contemplating it for a number of years. Then I met a high school friend of mine, again, after 30 years, and he invited us over to visit. And we sort of fell in love with the town and thought, well, that's, as, that's a good place to go. So um, it took, uh, took five or six years before we had everything squared away, but then we moved on over. Was there any one thing in particular that – said this is where we want to spend I said, hopefully the rest of your life <laughs> I, I, that, that wasn't put very nicely was it? I mean that you would wanted to live here for a while um, I don't think there was any one thing there was a lot of different things there you know we came in and we saw the uh, the, the uh, fine arts calendar and and the fine arts center and that was very uh, you know intriguing to us and then we you know, we looked around, and there were, you know, the town was supporting, or, or, I don't know, supporting, but there were four bookstores in the town of, you know, uh, 1,500 people. That sort of tells a lot. And uh, and then we, you know, we're down at the coffee shop and meeting with people, and we just sort of really liked it. It's a small town, but I have a little saying I've tagged on here that we're a dot on the map, but we're the crossroads of the world. That's probably true. There's a lot of people here that you don't expect to That's see. That's the reason I, I talked to Betty about this, doing this uh, interview with people, or I just called a conversation with people, uh, how they ended up here with some of the backgrounds we have. It's just, I, I, I'm always telling the people back in Ohio, oh, you can't believe this. We thought we were kind of artsy there, but there's just something every day. And do you know that the Lanier Library here is one of only 16 libraries in the entire country that is solely endowed? Yes, I did know. That. Oh, well, I thought I was going to tell you something. <laughs> How long have you been here, Mark? Three years. Three years. Well, almost four. Well, I'll be here four years the April Fool's Day. Okay. Well, we were, we'll be here four years in August, August 1st. Okay. And, of course, I got to know Mark through the community course. That's one of his many, many things he's involved with. And I don't know which one of these to go into first because you're a man of, of many talents. But let's, let's start by saying um, what um, – what which one of your professions are you most involved with that you spend more time with than any of these others? Uh, well, I do a couple things sort of full-time, and that is I do the, the writing full-time. It didn't start off full-time. Uh, the other thing that I do is music publishing, and I have a music publishing company. I believe that's uh, St. James. St. James Music Press, yeah. and, uh, and that – used to be my full-time job uh, and then as the writing grew then that sort of took over about half of it so now it's about half and half depending on the season uh, where we are sort of in the calendar and what's coming up 
you you write, and as I said, I bought uh, one of your books. You've written how many that have been published that really sell? Have you, how many? Three or four? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Eleven, actually. Uh oh. <laughs> well, we have some business coming in here for the St. James Press. Um, I read uh, the one. I think uh, your titles always intrigued me, and uh, we hate for you to cut off business here, but uh, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a very informal chit chat anyway so he's gone for the day <laughs> you want to go ahead and answer then i'll no, sit here and talk about your books okay kind of well th- this is um uh I've your book wa- that i read i think was the alto war tweed does that sound right yep that's right okay. that, that well, so that was the first one what, then you had a tanner you have uh, what is where do you get these titles well i've gone sort of through the entire um the entire choir yes <laughs> pretty much now and uh and it started off as sort of an offshoot of the music publishing so i i wrote the first one and thought well this will be a you know fun little thing to give to our um, our music customers and then after a while uh it started selling pretty well so then i decided well i better write another one and that one did well and and you know 11 books later it's now you know sort of has a good following do they all have this kind of it sounds like it's they're set around a church theme is that the idea they are set around a church uh-huh. theme they're cozy mysteries and um and the Wait, what was this that's called a cozy mystery oh. which is a genre unto itself i didn't know when i was getting into it but it's a genre where there's really no blood Good. and guts and there's um uh, a little humor well a not in all of, of them but in mine in mine there's quite a bit of humor mm-hmm. and uh and it's sort of very gentle it's sort of a gentle mystery yeah. um there's always a murder of course but it's always done you know with finesse <laughs> with finesse tongue in cheek <laughs> and off stage uh, uh, <laughs> generally speaking okay. although i have some had some on stage are they all inclined to be mysteries they're all mysteries okay. and they're all um in featuring the same uh choir director who is also a, a detective okay. okay and they're all set in an episcopal church so it sort of you know just has that theme going all the way through it okay well, uh, you have so many things to get into. We'll, we could talk for the whole program about your, where you get your ideas for your books and so forth. So we'll do this again maybe sometime. But anyway, um, I got acquainted with you through the, uh, the community course. That was, uh, I think, your first big splash here, wasn't it? Uh, probably, uh, as far as the community was concerned. Uh, you know, we sort of move in and lay low and get the feel of everybody. Yeah. But um, they asked me to do that, I guess, a year ago Christmas. Um, and it's a rotating position. Um, I think it's some people have done it for one year, some two years. Actually, I think Richard uh, Kennedy, I think, was your predecessor. Right, he did it for two years. Um, Chris Armbrust did it before that, uh, and then Jan Impey, I think, had done it f- for a long time before that, um, uh, ten years or something like that. I don't know exactly, mm-hmm. but I did. Uh, I did last year, and then I did the Christmas show this year, and so then I'm finished. You really threw one at them uh, for the Christmas show this past season. Uh, not not this year, but it was last year when you did the what? Well, I've forgotten the name of the the opera that you. What was it last year? Oh, we did that this year. Oh, was it this year? Yeah, we, time flies. Oh, I know. We did Saint Nicholas this year, which was a uh, which was about half the half of the program, which was a little Christmas opera, uh-huh. with that had choir in it and um, and some other people. So that was fun. Yeah, yeah. That's how I got acquainted with you, and your, your lovely wife plays violin and sings. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Uh, but were you surprised when you saw the turnout for a chorus in a town of this size? Does that kind of set you back? It was pretty amazing. Well, it doesn't set you back. It just, you know, sort of invigorates you to have that many people. We had over 100 both both times, and the spring was a little smaller. We had 85 or so for the spring concert. Um, but that's a great turnout for any community chorus much less one for a town this size yeah uh now will you be engaged for the the next series the next two years nope no. nope i'm finished oh. i think uh, well is that a rule that you have to quit <laughs> i don't know if it's a rule <laughs> it's like they try you out and say well i don't know we'll try someone else that's exactly right <laughs> okay. Okay. well it's good that it's a rotating position too i no, think okay. because you know there's probably in that chorus that I was conducting, there were at least 10 ex-conductors. Oh. 
a lot. Okay. So. Well, I, I thought it was fun. I was only in a couple of your concerts before I had to lay low for a while. And um, I said, you know, Mr. Schweitzer makes it fun to make a mistake because you're so good and so funny when you correct us. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so that's what people are trying to do, make mistakes. So I'll, uh, uh, yeah. I'll, uh, I didn't have to try. I think one time I was the only one singing and you <laughs> looked over my way to see where the little squeaky voice came from. But it's a, it's a great thing for a town this, this small. And we hope that, that uh, the next concert, that people come from all around us before because I volunteer at the hospital's thrift shop get a plug in here on trade street and when i'm bagging up their goodies i very often you know i find out well are you local and i would say someday 75 percent of people are from out of town that are in town uh-huh. for the day uh-huh. oh that's yeah. neat yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we there's a, a move on now to kind of attract attention here of course like all small towns, we suffered with the economy and so forth. But uh, luckily, there's only maybe one or two downtown buildings empty now. But um, have you seen an influx of any kinds in your meanderings around that there is a little bit of life stirring here? There is, and I think it comes and goes with uh, you know any small. small town and any kind of a comp- uh, economic shift that happens. Saluda is back sort of on top again. Landrum mm-hmm. is doing very well. So I think we're sort of next and, you know, we'll get, you know, those restaurants back and the and uh, and the shops will fill back up. I think it's just, you know, a matter yeah, of a couple uh, of years. Yep. Yeah. There are uh, gentlemen I've had on with other shows about their, the future and what they're planning here. We have empty buildings, uh, factory buildings and so forth all around, a lot of manpower, a lot, a lot of facilities. So we're hoping that we can get the word out about uh, Tryon, that we're here waiting for someone to come in and make us grow again. It used to be the train brought a lot in, and it's too bad that's no longer here. We're sitting almost on the train tracks now. We are, and it's, it's sort of neat. The Saluda grade, I don't know exactly why they closed, probably because it was no longer profitable for them to run. And there's been talk about, you know, changing that to a, you know, a trail, uh, a lot of different things. Um, but it is sort of, a, a, you know, you, we had heard that as recently as what, I don't know, 10 years ago, trains came by yeah. pretty regularly. I think in the 80s. Well, it used to be that, well, I know one gentleman uh, was on the train. And they had to stop here to cool the brakes when they came down the Saluda grade. And people would get off and they would sell fruit to them and, and little goodies, you know, local made products and so forth. And uh, one gentleman, Mr. Gillette, got off and he just fell in love with the place. And that's Gillette Woods' name for him. He built a, a lovely home up in the mountains, I, I understand. Right. And that, that was in the um, well, late 1800s, I yeah, guess. I think yeah. And, uh, and Gillette Woods is, yeah, he was the heir to the Gillette fortune, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know, I need to brush up on my try on history a little more. <laughs> well, I'm trying to, to catch up on it because I have, uh, since coming here, I've heard of all these interesting people, and uh, we have several lined up. I won't mention who they are because they haven't given me a yes yet, <laughs> but uh, we have, uh, you know, authors. Have you met uh, the recent author, Mr. Reed? Have you met him yet? You know, I think I have, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so it, um, he did the... Uh, um, Winston yeah, Churchill. Winston Churchill book, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, we're um, hoping I, I can uh, contact him, you know, because he would be, I, I think, why here? Perry Como built a home once up in, near the Saluda area. Right. Yeah. Um, he and was, David Niven was David here. Niven and one of the Three Stooges. Oh, really? Oh, really? Oh, well, now that's now, well, you, you would know about the Three Stooges <laughs> when you, I, with, your com, with your comedic air. But um, uh, what what would you, um, as a now a, hopefully a permanent resident here and so forth, uh, what would you like to see happen here? That's throwing you a curve, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, first things first. Huh? But, I mean, do you have any visions of what, geez, this would be great if? Um, the town would be really a lot um, more attractive. Uh, attractive, I think, to a lot of people if we had, you know, all the shops and, and things and restaurants and everything open. Um, but I think that will happen. Uh, so it'll just be, you know, a few years and people sort of moving wow. back into that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, it, but really, we like it here a lot. I think we're stuck with you, right? Mm, for the for the for the time being, I think so. Yeah. Well, uh, I've had people tell me that they've looked around uh, all over when they were ready to settle down, and 
I don't like to use the word retire exactly because people who come here in these various backgrounds, they come here to kind of retire, but they are still contributing. Well, in the, in our case, for sure we are because well we could move our we could have moved our business basically anywhere yeah. and we did look at a lot of places we looked up in in the Brevard area in the Asheville area up around um, Kingsport that area we looked um, uh, up around Boone and Blowing Rock and then sort of ended up you know choosing Tryon and saying well that's sort of I think where we want to go okay. What settled it for you, the meeting with all the guys over on the sidewalk in front of the little coffee shop? That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking that would be great to take the microphone over there and just sit. And ca- Of course, I'd have, probably have to censor some of it. But, it's, but it's, it's a, it's a, a, I mean, you see all, all ages of people there. And um, I've heard that that is one of the attractions people like, the old-time get-to-know-your-neighbor atmosphere. That's exactly right. And when we first moved, we didn't have internet or anything. So I took my computer and I was down there every morning for about, I don't know, a month, month and a half. And you just sit around talking to people. Um, you know, they have the big table inside, yeah. uh, the forum. I've never table. been in, the inside. Oh, oh, no, you should go <laughs> to the inside. I'll take my microphone and go. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's six people, eight people, depending on what time of day. And just amazing people with amazing stories, physicists from uh, University of South Carolina and, you know, people with doctorates in this and that from here and there, just that have all moved here. Well, we think it's just uh, the nicest place to live, uh, having lived in big cities and small cities, and I'm a small-town gal at heart. And um, when I moved here to be with my daughter and her husband, they invited me to come down, and I stayed. (laughs) And I'm here. But um, the thing is, we have the, the privileges and the opportunities, and the atmosphere of a small town, but we also have the convenience. We have to go someplace in a hurry. The airports and the larger cities are within just a short distance. It's great, Um, and I do travel a lot. Uh, Mostly I drive now if I can, but um, if you do have to fly, Greenville's right there, Charlotte's there, Asheville's there. Um, So you have three good airports right within the area. Hendersonville is a great town to go to. Um, Flat Rock Theater is wonderful we go down to greenville we go to spartanburg so if you do have to get out you're not far from anything right you have to if you need something and you can't find it here we say shop at home but uh we know we can't provide everybody with everything but uh we have managed to maintain the small town convenience stores and so forth and uh, schools you now your children are all grown you don't have any how many do you have two two but they're both in their 30s so i have grandchildren now Okay, Grandpa. I know. <laughs> and they live uh, within driving distance? No, they're, well, within driving distance. One's in Nashville okay. and one's in uh, Georgia, in Atlanta. Okay, okay. So that's close enough. You're, we're, I close say enough. we're you know, like a dot on the map at the crossroads of the world. So we're just kind of in between everything, convenient. So uh, if anyone has an idea to retire or bring a business in, boy, we've got the places for you here. And we've got the customers because they come from all around uh, the different counties, the different cities around. When I'm at the thrift shop, I'm always talking to people from all over. And uh, one day I went to the grocery store and met a fellow volunteer, and uh, she introduced me to, a, a, I think it was a, a relative, from New Zealand on his way to the Tour de France. <laughs> that's, okay. that's that small that's town. <laughs> Isn't it? It's, it's really it's 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 really strange. But uh, well, maybe we could do this again. Maybe when you're getting into a big project, uh, I'm sure someone will will get you busy. And maybe when you get ready to publish your book, incidentally, Mister Reed's book, the last uh, I, I don't I guess the last of the Churchill right. installment, was the last I look number seven on the New York Times bestseller list. So I'm going to look for the Alto or Tweed. Uh, it probably won't be on the bestseller list. But you don't think so? Well, I don't think okay. so. But, but should. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, but our bookstores, our four bookstores here, probably still have some of your books in stock. Oh, I think they have them all. Okay, good deal. Yeah. Like to sell them, wouldn't you? I would. Oh, oh. oh, absolutely. Go down right away. Yeah. Well, we we should have done this before Christmas, shouldn't we? <laughs> that way, Max Christmas presents. But Valentine's um, Day is coming up. Okay. Valentine's Day oh, oh. or Groundhog Day. Okay, April Fool's Day. <laughs> April Fool's Day, Memorial Day, Mother's Day. 
Every day's a holiday That's when you right. want to buy a good book, and we've got the bookstores here f- to prove it, haven't we? Okay. Well, uh, maybe when, as I said, uh, we can do this again sometime here in the offices of the St. James Music Press across from the post office here in, um, what's the street?